Thank you for your contribution to the Advocates for Human Rights. Every dollar goes to support asylum seekers, detained immigrants, trafficking victims, victims of domestic violence, and more. Now listen as some of our staff share updates on their work. Hi everyone, I'm Teresa Dykostjak, Pro Bono Counsel at the Advocates for Human Rights. I'd like to talk to you about volunteers at the Advocates for Human Rights, especially since April is National Volunteer Month. And volunteers are a core part of our mission at the Advocates. We want to engage as many people as possible in the human rights movement. And we wouldn't be able to do what we do without volunteers. They're a part of every aspect of our work from representing asylum seekers or providing interpretation or translation assistance to monitoring proceedings in immigration court or monitoring cases relating to violence against women or conducting legal research relating to trafficking or the death penalty. And volunteers also join us on our fact-finding missions and when we are conducting on-the-ground advocacy at the United Nations in Geneva, volunteers are right there alongside us. And when you come to our offices, please thank the people who are at the front desk greeting you because the people who staff our front desk are also volunteers and interns as well. And even though right now we're in a human rights from home time, our work isn't stopping and our volunteers aren't stopping. Just this past week, volunteers have stepped forward to take on new asylum cases. They've taken on research relating to Minnesota legislation. They've helped review case law relating to international human rights treaties, and they've also been sharing their language skills through translations and interpretation. So if you're interested in learning more about volunteering with The Advocates, please take a look at our website, theadvocatesforhumanrights.org backslash volunteer, where we have information if you're interested in representing asylum seekers or becoming an interpreter or translator, joining a court monitoring team, or helping us in the office as well. Hello everyone, I'm Lindsay Greising and I'm a staff attorney with the Advocates for Human Rights. Today I'm going to talk to you about our work on combating human trafficking. So in addition to our work on sex trafficking, the Advocates has been working on bringing labor trafficking to the fore in the upper Midwest. Through our outreach efforts, we have helped advocate for the passage of a wage theft law, which can often be a red flag for trafficking. We have also been working with state and local government agencies, community organizations, and worker justice groups to build systems that can effectively identify and respond to trafficking. We created protocol guidelines and trainings that communities can use to create their own collaborative response. We're currently working with the city of Minneapolis to design a municipal response to labor trafficking and with the Bureau of Criminal Apprehension, the BCA, to create a comprehensive investigative protocol for law enforcement. We have also provided training and outreach as well as materials on identification to service providers, medical professionals, faith communities, and community-based organizations across Minnesota, from Moorhead all the way down to Worthington and beyond. As a result of this outreach, we've seen an increase in identification and referral to our legal services. The Advocates provides legal services to non-citizens who have been labor trafficked who are entitled to special protections under U.S. law. The U.S. government, recognizing that many foreign national victims don't come forward to report trafficking because of fears of immigration consequences, established a special category of visa called the T-Visa for trafficking victims, which helps protect victims and keep our communities safer by encouraging them to be involved in the investigative and prosecutory process. The Advocates helps screen for T-Visa eligibility and then trains and supports pro bono lawyers to take on these cases. We provide mentoring to our pro bonos throughout the process and conduct CLEs and produce training materials to ensure folks are receiving the best representation possible. In fact, We are currently finishing up a manual on T-Visas that will be published online in a digital library. And we recently completed an online webinar that provided updates to over 100 attorneys nationwide. Through this work, we have been able to secure representation for more than 40 people and their families for T-Visas. We have also conducted intake with nearly 100 people and are excited to see Minnesota become a leader in fighting trafficking in all of its forms. 
If you'd like to volunteer as a pro bono attorney, learn more, or volunteer as an interpreter, please visit our website at theadvocatesforhumanrights.org. Stay safe and take care, everyone. Hi, I'm Jennifer Prestholt, International Justice Program Director. Typically in March, the Advocates for Human Rights has a team on the ground at the United Nations in Geneva. Our team is made up of volunteers and staff, as well as human rights defender partner organizations from different parts of the world. Um, and what we're doing in Geneva is meeting with Human Rights Council delegates from around the world. Our goal is to tell them about the human rights abuses that are happening on the ground and encourage them to make recommendations on the issues that we uh, that we care a lot about. So things like domestic violence, abolishing the death penalty, LGBTI rights, refugee and immigrant rights. Now this year we had to cancel our UN study advocacy trip because of the COVID-19 situation in Switzerland. Um, but the team had gone through all, almost all of the training. In Geneva, Geneva, we do a final intense training and part of the training is really practical uh, including uh, the nuts and bolts of how you go about setting up meeting with, meetings with Human Rights Council delegates. But we are planning to go to Geneva in September and carry on the advocacy work. So we thought we would share with you a little bit of the training video. So thank you to our UN volunteers for helping us make our partners' voices heard at the UN. And thank you to our interns and volunteers for helping us to make this video. And if you're interested in learning more about how the Advocates conducts UN advocacy, you can look at chapter nine in our Human Rights Tools for a Changing World. That's available on our website, uh, www.theadvocatesforhumanrights.org backslash change. The Advocates works with many international partners to help train human rights defenders for human rights monitoring. This past December, Women Rights Program Director Rose Park and I traveled to Morocco to do just that. Our partner in Morocco, Mobilizing for Rights Associates, known as MRA, has been developing a coalition around Morocco to monitor the legal system's response to sexual violence. When they scheduled a central training for those coalition members, they asked the Advocates Women's Rights Program to provide training. Rose and I spent over a week there training on things such as what a robust state response to sexual violence should involve and what sexual assault laws should include. We trained participants on how to gather quality data and how to organize it into meaningful, useful information. Over that week, we saw a clear development as the participants began to really dig in and get beneath the surface to recognize deeper issues. And our partnership with MRA is a two-way street. They recently reached out to us for some ideas about supporting their constituents during the COVID crisis. And we got some great ideas from them that we can pass along to our other partners. Violence against women is a worldwide endemic problem. We in the Women's Rights Program are proud to work with programs in many countries who are bravely challenging that status quo and demanding better for the women in their communities. Thank you for partnering with us. Hi everyone, my name is Elizabeth Montgomery. I am a legal fellow with the Advocates for Human Rights in the Women's Rights Program. Part of my job includes coordinating the day-to-day -day activities of our Watch Project Court Observation Volunteers. Women at the Courthouse, or Watch, was founded in 1992 and sent in volunteers into Hennepin County to observe cases of domestic violence and sexual assault. In 2014, court observation expanded into Ramsey County, and in 2016, expanded into Washington County. As of July 1st, 2019, WATCH became the WATCH project of the Advocates for Human Rights and continues to send volunteers into all three counties. With the current COVID-19 situation, our court observation is currently suspended, but we are always looking for future volunteers. And if you are interested, please visit the Advocates website and under the, the volunteer tab, there is a spot specifically for watch volunteer applications. After you fill that out, staff will be in touch with you with further details. Thank you. Hi, I'm Amy Burke with Senior Staff Attorney with the International Justice Program at the Advocates for Human Rights. I want to tell you a little bit about the work I've been doing over the past few weeks with an organization called Alternatives Cameroon. 
This organization was first on our radar thanks to the work of a pro bono team that was working on an, a project we called the Africa Advocacy Project back in 2013. These pro bono partners identified Alternatives Cameroon as a prospective partner in Cameroon, and as part of that project, we traveled to Cameroon in 2014 to do a pro bono needs assessment, to meet with a lot of different organizations working on human rights to see whether pro bono assistance could help them in the work that we, they do. The people we met with at Alternatives Cameroon were amazing. They showed us the great work that they're doing on the ground, and they were really enthusiastic about the prospect of lawyers around the world helping them with their advocacy. And since that time, we've collaborated with Alternatives Cameroon on several different reports to the United Nations and to the African Commission on Human and People's Rights. The African Commission, we learned recently, is going to be reviewing Cameroon's human rights record. This was originally scheduled to April and is probably deferred until June, maybe a little bit later on in the summer. And so we reached out to Alternatives Cameroon and they were really excited to collaborate with us again on doing a report to the African Commission. And we put together a great pro bono team. We have two fluent French speakers on that team and they've been working busily with Alternatives Cameroon to get a report ready to send off to the African Commission. They've had several Skype calls, there are lots of emails flying back and forth, and I'm working with both Alternatives Cameroon and the attorneys to make sure that that report meets the African Commission's standards for what goes into a report and how it all looks. So the second draft should be coming very soon and we'll work on finalizing that and getting that sent off for the African Commission's review. And, and it's really important this time for us to be doing the kind of advocacy with the African Commission on Human and People's Rights. When we do advocacy on LGBTI rights in Africa, there's a lot of, there are a lot of misconceptions about whether the idea of LGBTI rights is some sort of a foreign import. So having the African Commission speak about LGBTI rights to African countries is really powerful. So we're really excited for this opportunity. And it's really important because we help ensure that the government of Cameroon can't brush these issues under the rug. We collaborated with Alternatives Cameroon and a few other organizations in 2014, which is the last time the African Commission reviewed Cameroon's human rights record. And um, the African Commission made specific recommendations on sexual orientation and gender identity. It was really exciting to have that recognized in the outcome of of the review, but the government's report this time around doesn't even mention LGBT issues. So we make sure by submitting our report that LGBT issues are front and center when the government of Cameroon eventually goes to the Gambia for its review. And it's really powerful for our partners at Alternatives Cameroon to hear members of the African Commission talk about LGBT rights and to hold Cameroon accountable for the human rights violations that are targeting the LGBTQ community. I want to thank our pro bono teams that have worked with Alternatives Cameroon throughout the year years, especially the current team that's doing a great job under these difficult circumstances. I also want to thank our courageous partners at Alternatives Cameroon. They're really amazing and they always step up. And I want to thank the donors who make this work possible. If you want to get more involved with the advocates' work on LGBTI rights around the world, you can learn more by reading our reports on LGBTI rights in Cameroon. Those are on our website. And you can give. With funding, we're hoping we can eventually travel to Cameroon again to do training and fact-finding side-by-side with Alternatives Cameroon. And if you're an attorney, you can help us strengthen our partnership with Alternatives Cameroon and with other partner organizations around the world that are working to promote LGBTI rights. Thanks. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Lacey and I'm the Program Assistant for International Justice at the Advocates for Human Rights. A core mission of the Advocates is to provide direct legal services to asylum seekers in Minnesota and across the United States. But the Advocates also provides clients with the opportunity con to contribute to change in their home countries by bringing the, their stories to the attention of the United Nations. For instance, we recently submitted a report on gender-based violence in Nicaragua to the Committee on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women. The report included several stories from clients who had experienced domestic violence or discrimination while living in Nicaragua. Bringing their stories to the attention of the international community is one important step toward holding governments accountable for failing to uphold their human rights, international human rights obligations. We've submitted similar reports using information from clients from a variety of countries, including Mexico, Rwanda, Cuba, Liberia, Ethiopia, Kenya, Eritrea, Honduras, and many more. We're so grateful to our volunteers who help us draft these reports and to our donors for supporting this important work. We're also so grateful to our clients for their courage in coming forward and for allowing us to use their stories, share their stories with the United Nations. You can also find out more about how the Advocates does advocacy at the United Nations 
in Human Rights Tools for a Changing World, which is available on our website for free download or by following this link. Larry Madonna, a dear friend of the Advocates, has recorded some music as a thank you for your contribution. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for supporting the Advocates for Human Rights. I'm Larry McDonough. I'm going to play a little jazz for you while you guys are hanging out. I'm going to start with some music uh, recorded and performed 60 years ago by the pianist Bill Evans. The first piece is Blue and Green, uh, which if you've ever listened to the album Kind of Blue by Miles Davis, uh, this is a Bill Evans composition that's on that album. to Miles Davis, but that's kind of what group leaders did back then. They took credit for the pieces that were written by band members. Next piece I'm going to do is an arrangement by Bill Evans of the Cole Porter tune, All of You. 
it was first uh, recorded by Bill Evans on the albums that he released in 1961. really liked doing the work of the old standards uh, from Broadway show tunes. This is my arrangement of his arrangement of the old Young and Washington tune, My Foolish Heart.
So I'm going to finish up with uh, a tune that I think is fit for the times. Before I stop, I want to thank you again for supporting the Advocates for Human Rights, for participating in this event, and to volunteering with the Advocates and supporting them financially in any way that you can. This is important work. It's a fight for justice. It's a fight for freedom. It's a fight for life for the clients of the Advocates. The last tune I'm going to do is, is an old tune, and a lot of people don't know the history of it. I could spend an hour talking to you about the history of that, but I won't do that tonight. It's called We Shall Overcome. A lot of people think of it as a protest movement, a peace movement song. It actually dates back to the old black churches of the 1800s, when it was called I Will Overcome. This is my jazz version of We Shall Overcome. Thank you for listening and thank you for supporting the Advocates for Human Rights.